Welcome back. Uh, we have seen that uh, the pointwise convergence of the Fourier series is a difficult uh, thing to handle at the present time. Uh, so, one can ask the question that if we have the partial sum of this is minus n to n f hat n e to the power i n x, does it converse to f in some other way other than the pointwise convergence. So, what can be the possibility of the convergence whether it converges in mean or not. So, uh, what we would like to see that whether this s n f of x, it is a trigonometric polynomial. So, this is uh, integrable minus of f of x to the powers d x, whether this goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. Okay. So, in order to do that, so let us recall some of the facts what we have seen in our linear algebra course earlier, uh, namely the inner product in the space of Riemann integrable function minus pi to pi. So, this space consists of all 2 pi periodic Riemann integrable function. So, it does not matter whether I am taking minus pi to pi or 0 to 2 pi. Okay. So, let us define let f g both are Riemann integrable 2 pi periodic function and we define the inner product f inner product g, this is equal to 1 over 2 pi minus pi to pi f of x g of x bar dx. Here we are allowing ourselves to consider complex valued function. So, if it is uh, no real valued function, then it is nothing but integral minus pi to pi f of x g of x dx. So, as in order to show that this is an inner product, what we need to show from our linear algebra course f 1 plus f 2 comma g, this by the linearity of the integral it is easily we can see that this is f 1 in our product g plus f 2 in our product g. Similarly, f it is also additive in the second coordinate this is f g 1 plus f g 2 and if alpha is uh, a scalar, then what we do alpha f of g, this is equal to alpha times f comma g and if beta is a complex number scalar, then this is going to be in the second coordinate, this is beta bar f of g. It is uh, linear in the first coordinate and which is uh, skew linear in the second coordinate. So, now, uh, so as a consequence of that what we get is that this uh, uh, alpha f 1 plus f 2 beta g 1 plus g 2, this is going to be alpha beta bar f 1 g 1 plus alpha beta bar f 1 
g 2 plus alpha beta bar f 2 g 1 plus alpha beta bar f 2 g 2. Okay. So, now what we can see is that if uh, I take f in our product with f this is equal to 1 by 2 pi minus pi to pi f of x into f of x bar that will be mod of f of x square dx which is greater or equal to 0. Now, if f is equal to 0 then this will imply that f f this is equal to 0. However, we if f f is equal to inner product of f with f is equal to 0, we cannot conclude that f is equal to 0, because we know that there are non-zero Riemann integrable function whose integral is 0, not only that non non-zero, non-negative, because at one point if I, we are changing the value of f, you consider f to be 0 everywhere except at one point and give certain value, then that integral is going to be 0. However, f as a function may not be equal to 0. However, if f is a continuous function, then f f is equal to 0 will imply that f is equal to 0. That is uh, uh, as you can see that if f is not equal to 0, which means mod f square is a continuous function is not equal to 0 at some x naught let us say. then suppose I have minus pi to pi here and x naught is here, it is taking a positive value, then I can always find a neighborhood of x naught in which mod of f of x naught is not equal to 0. Hence, integral mod of f of x square which is greater, suppose this neighborhood let me call this as i, then f f is greater or equal to 1 by 2 pi integral over i mod of f of x square dx and which is positive which is a contradiction. Therefore, f has to be equal to 0 provided f is a continuous function. Okay. So, this uh, if we look at if we denote is equal to then square. If I am denoting this, then this I will call the norm of f and this norm is going to satisfy for any Riemann integrable 2 pi periodic Riemann integrable function, this is greater or equal to 0. And if f is equal to 0, then norm of f 2 is equal to 0. Now, if f is a continuous function, then norm of f is equal to 0 will imply that f is equal to 0, that is one thing. Second thing is easily one can see that f plus, uh, okay. if I take alpha and hit that with f, then if I am doing this, then this is going to be mod of alpha norm of f of 2 naught, because uh, alpha square and then this is norm of f square. So, mod alpha is going to come out of it. Third is that norm of f plus g is lesser equal to norm of 
f 2 plus norm of so this requires a little bit of argument for that. So, for the time being let us just assume this is what we are going to get. Okay. Uh, so, now this is what is our norm as, as you can see that this norm if we compare this in our product in, in R n then as you can see the norm what we are defining it here this is essentially nothing but the Euclidean metric uh, norm of x which is means the distance from 0 to the vector x this is analog to that and which provided us uh, a notion of certain distance in the space of Riemann integrable function. So, now one of the very uh, interesting thing here is that the cauchy swarge inequality. So, which says states that mod of f g is lesser equal to norm of f 2 norm norm of g of 2 norm. So, now before proving this, so what one can see that if f is Riemann integrable and norm of f 2 is equal to 0, then what we can say is that we may not be able to say that f is 0 at every point. However, as we have seen that at 1 point, 2 point, if f is not 0, that is not very serious. So, what the result it says is that if this is equal to 0, then there exists a set E contained in minus pi to pi such that f of x is equal to 0 for all x belongs to the E complement and then one can say that what is going to be the size of this set E, which essentially says is that the E can be, now if I take the infimum of all those inter summation of the length of the interval i n such that E is contained in I union of n countable union of n of i n. So, now E is such a small set that if I take any E and cover it by the countable union of uh, intervals and I take their sum of each individual interval then this is going to be 0. That means, it is negligible in fancy word we say that f is equal to 0 almost everywhere. As a matter of fact, this is uh, if and only if condition uh, that uh, uh, if f is Riemann integrable, then in this case we will say that uh, the E has major 0. So, so, now it says that if f is Riemann integrable, then f is continuous almost everywhere, if and only if it is continuous almost everywhere. Apart from the set with a very small set, f is continuous. Once we have that, then uh, it is easy to see that if f is a continuous function, non-negative function whose integral is 0 and continuous, then f is 0. So, what we can say is that f here is equal to 0 almost everywhere. 
but we are not going to use that much. So, this essentially suggests that uh, because uh, you remember that uh, when we are talking about the Riemann integral, then when we are taking the partition, then we are choosing any arbitrary points and we are constructing our rectangle and we have the freedom to choose any arbitrary point. However, close this two points can be, their functional value will be close provided f is nearly continuous. Otherwise, we will that is the reason that when we look at the indicator function of rationals, then which uh, oscillates uh, uh, 1 or 0, uh, in that case that is not Riemann integrable. So, okay, so we can assume here to the pro. So, norm of f and norm of g, they are not in 0. If one of them 0, then we know that the inner product uh, is 0. So, f is 0, therefore, the inner product is going to be 0. So, the equality, inequality satisfies. So, this is a trivial inequality for any two non-negative number a b greater or equal to 0, 2 a b is less or equal to a square plus b square that is trivial because a minus b whole square is greater or equal to 0. So, by using this what we can see is that f of x g of x this is equal to square root of norm of g by square root of norm of f mod of f theta f x into square root of norm of f, the, all these are two norms, because we are assuming that both norm f and norm g, they are non-zero. Now, take this as a and this as b, therefore, this is lesser or equal to one half of norm of g 2 by norm of f 2 into mod of f of x square plus square. Now, I integrate both the sides. So, this is Okay, 1 by 2 pi uh, minus pi to pi f of x g x bar d x. Now, this is mod, this is lesser equal to 1 by 2 pi minus pi to pi mod of f of x mod of g of x d x. Now, we apply this inequality, this is true for each x. Therefore, if we ap by applying this inequality, what you are going to get is that this 1 by 2 pi. So, 1 by half, 1 half factor will come out and in the first integral, this is minus pi to pi, then norm g 2 by norm of f 2 mod of f of x o square d x plus one half of this is what because these are all scalar they are going to come out of the integral. So, now this is nothing but if I take the factor of uh, 1 by 2 pi there. So, this is 1 by 2 norm of g of 2 
by norm of f2 into this one is nothing but square plus 1 by 2 So, therefore, this is nothing but norm of f into norm of g. Now, as you can see the equality is going to occur when this equality is going to happen. Therefore, the a square plus b square is equal to 2 a b. Therefore, a is equal to b. So, that is what is the equality. Okay. So, now we as we have seen in our linear algebra course, inner product actually gives the notion of extends the notion of angles from Rn to a, an inner product space. So, in the similar way, we can say that uh, F and G are orthogonal. if that is we will write it f is orthogonal to g if inner product of f g is equal to 0 exactly like the dot product. So, now what are the example over here? So, let us see one of our favorite example is going to be e to the power i n x for n varies over z. If I am defining f n to be this, then as you can see if n is not equal to m, then f n f m this is equal to 1 by 2 pi minus pi to pi e to the power i n x into e to the power minus of i m x d x which is what we have seen 0. So, this is one of the most important property of e to the power i n x. So, they essentially they are uh, orthogonal it is an orthogonal family. So, and also in this case the f n square is nothing but going to be 1. So, now another example you can you can take is that if you take f n of x this is equal to cos n x then what you are going to get is that this is going to give you an or orthogonal family let us say in 0 to pi let us say. Now, then the inner product I will define to be integral from uh, um, 0 to pi f of x g of x bar. Then as you can calculate that if n is not equal to m, then this is going to give you 0. So, so this is orthonormal family is what? a family of functions phi n a function is said to be orthonormal if inner product of phi n phi m this is equal to 0 if n is not equal to m and 1 if n is equal to m. As uh, you can see that if uh, we if we have a orthogonal family then by defining let phi n be an orthogonal family. that is inner product of phi n phi m this is equal to 0 if 
n is not equal to m. So, now if we if we take uh, let psi n this is equal to phi n by norm of phi n provided if norm of phi n is not equal to 0 then we can divide it by this then as you can see that psi n psi m in our product all this phi n norm and uh, phi m norm they are scalars they we can pull this out from the integral which is equal to 0 if n is not equal to m. Now, if n is equal to m, then in this case, this is phi n phi n, this is equal to norm of phi n square and in the below, you have norm of phi n square. So, n equal to, so this is going to be 1 if n is equal to m, which means if we are provided with uh, orthogonal family, then we can normalize this and uh, make that to be uh, ortho normal. Okay. So, another example of the orthogonal uh, functions, let f then we have s and f. Let p of x is equal to summation over alpha n e to the power i n x, where mod of alpha lesser equal to n, which means it is, I take p to be a trigonometric polynomial of degree lesser equal to n. Now, let us see f minus of s n f that is the most important object we would like to know about this along with this p then this is we will just uh, write down the definition this is f of x minus s n f is more than lesser equal to n f hat of n e to the power i n x and then summation over mod k lesser equal to n alpha k bar e to the power minus of i k x d x that is p x bar. Now, this you can see that by the linearity of this, alpha k bar e to the power minus of i k x d x minus 1 by 2 pi and this is a finite, both are finite sum, we can pull this, both the sums outside the integral and what we are and f at of n is scalar alpha k bar left with e to the power i n x into e to the power minus of i k x dx. So, in the next lecture, we will finish this computation and we will see that f minus of s n is orthogonal to every trigonometric polynomial or degree lesser equal to n. Thank you.